terrific to be here. I'm up from Melbourne. Um, and it's the first time I've been in Newcastle and what I've seen this morning particularly uh, and last night, it's a beautiful place. So uh, thanks a lot for having me and thanks to Christina and Paul for organising today's event. It's terrific to see innovation, uh, I, I guess, on centre stage. Um, very important for, for BRW last year was the inaugural Innovative Companies list, uh, which was put together in conjunction with Inventium. Uh, we'll hear from Amantha a bit later. Um, but she's certainly the uh, driving force behind Inventium and her passion and, and energy is uh, quite contagious. So uh, it's terrific to be preparing for at the moment for the second list. We've got twice as many entries for the 2013 edition um, and we should have a, a, a terrific crop of companies. We're hoping to go from a, a top 30 in 2013 to a top 50 this year, um, which I, I guess speaks to how important innovation is um, you know, for, for, for all businesses of all shapes and sizes, and that's the great thing about the list. Um, we, we are going to hear from these some of these companies today. Uh, um, uh, CBA's here, um, the guys from Coca-Cola Amatol are here, and I guess this is uh, a bit of a representation of the calibre of entrants we received for last year's awards. Uh, these are all big companies um, with big resources to throw it, to throw at innovation. Most of them will have either research and development teams or product development teams and a lot of resources to put into their innovation efforts. And I think resources means money, time and particularly people. Uh, big businesses like this would have, have full-time people and you'll get to meet a few today who are driving the innovation process and who, you know, it's their day in, day out job to tweak, improve and come up with new products. But I wanted to talk about the winner of the Innovation Awards last year, the, the company that was named the most innovative company in Australia. And that's a business that is definitely not in the uh, large corporate space. Um, a, a small to mid-sized business called ClickView. Uh, now, th they were number one. They're in the education game. Their, their product is, is quite smart. And, and some of you, you guys who've got kids at school may actually send your kids to a school that uses this product. It's a it's a video streaming and recording service, basically a, a big box that sits in the school somewhere. It's worth about seven grand. Uh, it can record up to eight high definition channels at the same time and then stream in more than 30,000 bits of content to, su to support the teacher in their, in their teaching. So, you know, if you're taking a biology class or a physics class or, or whatever sort of class it might be, you might stream in a bit of content, a, a clip or a lecture or, or some sort of uh, teaching aid, I guess, that supports what you're doing. Um, found, uh, founded relatively recently, in the last five years or so, and they've got 60 staff. So I guess uh, I gather this is a, an SME type crowd and, and this is a very much an SME business. They've got all those pressures that a small, fast growth business has, cash flow and, and uh, getting the right people and making sure the management team's all pulling in the right direction. So a fantastic little business, great growth story, based down in Sydney and they were really a, a worthy winner. Um, so what, what I want to share from you, I, I, with, with you guys today is, I guess, the template that they use. I think it's a template that works really well for, for small businesses particularly that don't have massive amounts of money um, or, or resources to invest in the innovation process. But it's a template that allows you to keep pushing forward um, with your innovation journey. So the four things that they, they did, uh, Paul spoke about the importance of leadership in the innovation process. I think there's two types of leadership that's important. The first is leadership from the, the top echelons of your business. So whether that's a company, that means company founders, directors, uh, senior managers, they all need to embrace the idea of innovation and, and make it part of the culture. Um, Paul's a great example of that, I think. Uh, you know, you can see his passion for for innovation and, and that clearly will permeate through the entire business. You don't have to be, I don't think, an ideas person. You don't have to be the creative type or the, the person who's going to come up with the, the, the brand new product innovation or service innovation. But you do have to be a leader who says ideas are important in our business and, and filter that through the organisation. I think the other sort of leadership is you do need some sort of captain of the innovation effort. Um, now that person might be in product development, might well be the CEO or it might be a company founder who's 
sort of stepped away from day-to-day -day operations and has the time and, uh, and, and focus on just coming up with ideas. But you need someone who calls the next meeting, who takes the notes at the meeting, who keeps following up and keeps everybody on the innovation track. I think having a, a champion or a captain of innovation is really important and, um, as I say, doesn't necessarily have to be the CEO or, or, or a senior leader. It needs to be someone who's passionate about it. Uh, the second thing I, I've put there is know thyself. You need to know what you're focused on. Um, now, ClickView is essentially a video streaming business. Uh, and, but they do admit quite freely that they do not have the best video streaming technology or even the second best. What they've decided is that they're not in the video streaming game, they're in the education game. And by knowing what they're focused on, that changes the, the way they innovate. If you could imagine, you know, you, you're sitting, if, you, if, if they thought they were a video streaming company, then the focus of their innovation would be how do we get the sound quality better, or how do we improve the picture quality, or, or how do we make the, the streaming process faster. But if, well, by, by, by saying they're an education company, they change the focus of their innovation. It's about how do we get better content to the kids, how do we deliver new services to the school so they can broadcast graduation night or presentation night to teach to, to parents who can't be there. That, that knowing yourself is really important in all parts of your business. It makes you a more focused company, but I think it's really important in innovation. You don't want to be focusing on the wrong things, particularly in a small business where time and resources are precious. You need to know exactly what you're innovating and, and where you want to go. I think the, the other ingredient is time. I think you can do innovation with relatively little resources in terms of money and, and people. You don't have to be a, have a big team or a, or a specific product development person to push innovation forward, but you do have to be prepared to invest time. It's the one thing that companies big, small and medium size have to be able to give. Uh, you need time to come up with ideas, of course, but you also need time to evaluate ideas. You need time to learn from failures and, and build on successes. You, you can't you can't be in that innovation, you can't have a proper innovation process without making sure you've got a lot of time to do everything properly. Uh, I think it's the one non-negotiable. And the last thing which uh, Amantha will probably talk about a little bit further is the process. You do need to have a formal process, um, not, not formal, formal's the wrong word, but you do need to have a set process that everybody understands, this is how we innovate, these are the steps that we take uh, to, make, to bring an idea into the business. And I just want to run through the click view process because I think it's a great, uh, relatively quick process that does help manage the risks of innovation and, and, and means that you're taking quite calculated risks rather than uh, sort of bet the company risks. All right, so their process starts every second Friday. When they sit down, they have everybody in the company sit down at three o'clock with a few beers or drinks of their choice and they have an open meeting, a town hall style, all in meeting, everybody's invited, uh, and it's just a brainstorming session. Um, everybody from any place in the company can sit down and throw up an idea. Uh, it might be an internal innovation, so it might be how do we do this process within the company, in the, in the back end of the company, how do we do that better? Or it might be an idea based on feedback from a customer, or it might be an idea on something they've seen that a competitor's doing, or you know, it can come from anywhere. Um, but the idea, but the, the purpose of making every, getting everybody involved is that ideas can either be quickly shot down, which is a, a, a part of the innovation process, or the ideas can be built upon by other people in, in, the, in the business. So if there's a great idea from a bit of customer feedback that the sales guys have, you know, we want to change the product in this, this, this way, there might be people in manufacturing who say, well, we can't do that and that, but how about we do you know, we can change the packaging or the way we um, design this product uh, to, to meet some of your needs. Or there might be someone in supply chain who says we need to reduce the size of the packaging. If we, if we could cut a little bit of weight out of this packaging, it would be a lot cheaper to ship. Right, so people in design and, and the back end might say, okay, well, we can build on that in this, this and this way. But the purpose, it's really important to have that open meeting. It also says to the company that everybody's involved in the innovation process and everybody has some ownerships. So that, that starting point um, allows the idea generation, but it also says to everybody in the company, 
we are about ideas. And every second Friday, I'm not sure what uh, your workplaces are like on Friday afternoon, but uh, it would seem not much gets done at our workplace after three o'clock on Friday. So it would seem to be a relatively good uh, use of time to sit down with, with your fellow colleagues and have a few beers and toss around a few ideas. The first st step of their process is shoot. They, they, they take a shot at the idea that's come up from, the, uh, from this open forum and they try and shoot it down. They try and say that won't work for this reason, this reason or this reason. Um, and that, that's, a, a, a re that, that's, a good, that's a good process. You don't want to be throwing the resources of the company at ideas that just aren't going to work or are based on a whim. So this process helps filter the ideas and make sure that, that good ideas keep, keep progressing through the system. Now it might be that a, a bit of an, an idea based on some feedback from a customer just isn't technically possible at the moment. And so somebody in IT or manufacturing will be able to say, no, we can't do that at the moment for this, this and this reason. Go back and we'll, we'll, tweak, that. we'll tweak that idea a bit further. We'll, we'll come at it in a different way. Now that's, that, that is an important part of the innovation process. Not all ideas are great ideas and it's great to be able to discover that early in the process so you're not going through and using your precious resources. However, if an idea does get a, a groundswell of opinion, a groundswell of consensus and, and gets taken forward to the next stage, then they go again. They have another shot at it. And this will involve taking a, a small team and trying to, trying to break down the idea or test the idea, I guess, within different parts of the business. That they might go and talk to different divisions and say, right, if we try this, how will it work for you guys? They might go to some customers and get some feedback. They might go to suppliers and say, what do we need to do to make this idea work from your point of view? The idea, again, is to try and break down the idea and see if it passes a, another set of tests, to see whether it is something that, that could work in the real world, in, in the real marketplace. And I think that's another really important stage of the process. You know, it's, it's tested internally, then it's tested externally. And then, as the, the founders say, they go boom. They put all the weight of the business behind that idea and they start to implement it as quickly as possible. They throw time and they throw resources and they throw energy at the business. But only after it's passed those two steps. There's a great book uh, that I'm sure a lot of you would have read by Jim Collins called Good to Great. And he talks about this idea of shooting lots of bullets rather than shooting cannonballs. Great companies shoot lots of bullets and they shoot very few cannonballs. And what he's talking about there, um, I, I was lucky enough to interview him earlier this year and, he, and he's talking about the idea of taking lots of little experiments throughout the process and only when, only when you know that that idea can stand up do you fire your cannonball and, and put the whole weight of the business behind an idea. It's really important, I think, to make this innovation process one of calculated risk, not bet the company on a whim type risks, particularly for small businesses where resources are precious, time is precious. And, and, and let's be frank, a, a, a mistake backing the wrong idea can be extremely costly. So this process, this shoot, shoot, boom process, it's a, it's a nice way of looking at it. It might not work completely for your company, but I would suggest that having a, a, an innovation process where ideas are rigorously tested at least once, twice in the, in the, in the time, of, in, the, in the case of ClickView, is a really good idea. It means that you're focused on focused on calculated risks, on ideas that have truly passed a few internal tests and it means that you know, you're, you're continuing to get that innovation process right. Um, so look, we're, we're, it's Tuesday morning this morning, we're still a few days out from Friday so you've now got time to go back and uh, make some time in your diaries and in your people's diaries to have a meeting on Friday. Maybe the first meeting might be about talking about how you're going to get the innovation process right in your business. I think that's a, that, that's a good, good place to start. But I'm sure that the, the shoot, shoot, boom template does provide a, a really good starting point for, for not only one-off innovation but continuous innovation. So uh, thanks for listening and we, uh, uh, we really hope that we'll see some businesses in this room today that will uh, eventually be on the BRW innovation list. Thanks a lot.